The weekend ending May 26, 2024 was quite a busy and victorious one for the valiant fighters of the Burkina Defense Forces, who with the help of their lethal combat drones, missiles, ground troops and attack helicopters, neutralized dozens of terrorists and captured dozens more, in an operation that thwarted impending terror attacks in the country's northern parts. The operation was commenced on the Friday of May 24, when the Burkina-based skyfighters were alerted of a major attack on terrorists at Sabunga in Mali near its border with Burkina Faso, with a possibility of terrorists seeking to escape to Burkina soil, to also launch an attack there. In response, the Burkina vectors were quickly deployed to survey the area, and upon reaching the village where the terrorists were planning to carry out an attack, they noticed several hundred motorcycles approaching the village. As you may have noticed here, through the lens of the drone, the criminals on motorcycles appeared like tiny bedbugs scavenging for human blood, giving quite a scary impression of how things were developing on the ground. Without hesitation, the air vectors saw it appropriate to first scare them and chase them away from the village, to prevent them from launching their planned attack on the villages. And thus, a small missile was fired at the village to force the criminals to leave the village without causing any harm to the villages. As expected, the criminals moved into panic mode, and as confused as they appeared here, they started looking for ways to escape the village, and oblivious to them, that was exactly what the Burkina forces had wanted to do, because that's when the hunt then begun. At this stage, several specific drone tests and attacks were carried out on the criminals as they fled for their lives, as other vectors specialized in tracking took over. Then on May 25, an aerial survey made it possible to discover some of the terrorists who had gone in large numbers to an area near Boundor town with intention to launch an attack. They had gathered under thick trees, but under the watchful eyes of skyfighters, they were not as safe as they thought. They were immediately locked and hit effectively, with the strike burning their means on the spot. And on the Sunday of May 26, terrorists on motorcycles were observed to be regrouping 25 kilometers east of Pisila town, possibly to plan an attack or their escape. They had regrouped under thick tree with hopes to camouflage, and hide from the sharp eyes of the aerial vectors, but there was no escape route for them to that far. They were easily identified and struck by the air vectors, with the strike brightly burning their logistical means, and neutralizing some of them. Still on that May 26, another set of criminals had gathered under large trees in the north center, and were silently observed converging in large numbers towards their temporary assembly point. Very quickly, an operation was mounted with the special forces units, and then at the right moment, a missile was sent to greet them under the trees. The quickest, and those who heard the lightning descend of the missile on them tried to flee, but a majority of them already had their fate sealed, and they couldn't escape a date with the maker. Attack helicopters would then take over immediately, and other helicopters dropped off the army's special forces for them to deal with the survivors, and destroy or collect their logistical means.
and at around 5.40 p.m. on the same day, the air vectors were again alerted of an attack in Zambunga area, and very quickly, they responded, with one of them spotting the column of criminals in the process of retreating, with the ground force unit Cheetah on their heels. A coordination that was made with the unit, by support of the aerial vectors launched an attack at the head of the column, and then another strike would follow. The Cheetah and Ghosts units that were now close to the columns would then move into action after this strike, and engage the survivors in a fierce battle. At the end, several terrorists were neutralized and others taken prisoner, with their combat material being recovered. It's to be noted that as this was happening, a major national function was underway, down in Ouagadougou, especially on May 26, whereby, transition President Captain Ibrahim Traoré's term was being extended after a series of national dialogue meetings on the same. And out of those meetings, whose participation included representatives of various groups of people, among them the defense forces, religious leaders, persons with disabilities, members of the Constitutional Council, and other groups of people, it was agreed that Captain Traoré's presidency or rather the transition should be extended by five years, up to July 2, 2029. To effect the same, the youthful leader signed an amended charter, which also stipulated that he'll be eligible to run for presidency in democratic elections, after the lapse of the transition in that 2029.